Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week, 10 days. For today's second video, day 10 will take us to the 29th of June. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and Isham Ensembles. Maybe we'll try a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS meeting at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us to the middle of uh, July. I'll get on with that for you in a moment, just to say... That the first video so released today was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. And uh, we've also got the sixth update for Glastonbury Festival coming up for you around 6 p.m. this evening, followed by a live stream at 8 p.m. So I've got a very busy evening ahead. Got to do a video upload and then get ready for a live stream. Uh, at 8, we're going to be uh, live streaming and we will be discussing the winter 2023-24 NEO forecast. It was premiered last night at 7 p.m. So finally, 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 the cat is out of the bag. And um, we're going to have a chat about it tonight at uh, 8. And we'll also have a look at 12Z. And, uh, of course, show some long range as ever. So if you're around the channel at 8 p.m., then uh, check in and whatnot. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Please like, share, subscribe on the videos and the content. Thanks so much for doing that. And uh, let's crack on. I'm going to be coached by Cowley as well this afternoon. CPC. Uh, <laughs> I'm off to the gym to uh, be coached by my trainer. So uh, he'll be putting me through my paces, I'm sure, in a couple of hours. Anyway, let's start off with the situation in the Trump Atlantic. Two disturbance areas now. We've got a yellow X that has appeared just here that is uh disturbance two with a 30 and 40 percent chance of cyclone formation in the next two and seven days respectively and uh, then we've got this red x just here that's disturbance one um and that's running 100 percent chance of cyclone formation, 100 chance of cyclone formation in the next two days that's going to do something dramatic i think in a mo um no they're saying <laughs> satellite images indicate that the area of low pressure located roughly midway between africa and lesser Antilles has become better organized overnight and is close to becoming a tropical cyclone if current trends continue advisories could be initiated uh, initiated on a tropical depression later today. The system is forecast to be generally westward at 15 to 20 miles per hour with further development across the central tropical Atlantic through the middle part of the week. Additional information on the systems, including storm warnings, can be found in high seas forecasts issued by the National Weather Service. 100% chart site location. In the next two days, that's about to be declared. And I may be a bit of a mistake um, on Saturday's video, because I said that would probably become Arling. Now, apparently, I missed this, we have already had Arling. So, this is actually our uh, Atlantic hurricane slash tropical storm names for this season. We're at the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season page at the UK Bet. Arlene has already gone, so that would be Brett, actually. That's either going to be tropical storm and or hurricane Brett, if it makes it that far. The full list of names for this season are Arlene, Brett, Cindy, Don, Emily, Franklin, Gert, Harold, uh, the Dahlia, I think that is. Um, not sure about that one. Um, Jose or Josie, but I think it'd be Jose. Katia, Lee, Margot, Nigel, Ophelia, nice and Shakespearean. Um, Philip, um, Ringna, Sean, Tammy, Vince, and Whitney. They are our uh, Atlantic slash um, Toggle Storm season names for 2023. So it'll be interesting how far into that list we get. Technically, you wouldn't expect to get very far in, or normally you wouldn't expect to get very far in this year because of the developing El Nino. But we have got an awesomely warm uh, Atlantic um, and subtropical Atlantic uh, this year so it's going to be very interesting the atlantic will be is in a state where it will want to produce uh lots of storms and and whatnot el nino will try and stop that from happening but qu what quite how it's going to work out will be very very interesting to see what happens and uh, of course we'll bring you up to date 
know what's going on with those sea surface temperature anomalies. Where we do, um, the guys where we say roundup is coming soon. We haven't done a sunny roundup for a little while, but now that the NEO forecast is out of the way, we're going to be able to bring you uh, the Sunday roundup this Sunday. Wow, wow, wow. Watch your space, everyone. Okay, centering temperature next. So CT is now sitting at 16.5. Wow, wow, wow. Which is 2.4 degrees above 61 to 90, 90 average. What a warm June this is turning into. That's provisional to yesterday to the 18th of, uh, of June. Um, and again, I keep emphasizing it. We had a cool of an average, below average CT anomaly by around over a degree up to the eighth of the month so for the first week of the month it's actually like a degree cooler than average so in the past couple of weeks we have put on you know over three degrees absolutely incredible the uh, heat wave that we've had in the uh, middle two weeks of june so far these are the gfs upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks so the red line is the first year upper air temperature average for london you can see we are currently above average at the moment and forecast to stay above average through the rest of this week and on into the closing days of june now by the time we get into early july which is this period just here we do see those upper air temperature coming down a little bit still slightly above average but not as warm as currently although there is a lot of scatter within that there are a few very hot outliers up here the equal number that are quite cool down there so a little bit of uncertainty by the time we get into the beginning of july but before that the rest of june is looking uh really really warm precipitation wise um it's about dry weather i think there will be a few showery bursts coming again could be some heavy rain for the storm tonight and tomorrow again parts of England and Wales. After that, it was mostly dry, really, uh, for London towards month's end. But as we get into the beginning of July, maybe a few more precipitation spikes then, but that's a very uh, long way off, of course. Temperature anomalies from the 19th to of June are going to be above average, not just for UK, but through most of Europe. And precipitation anomalies, well, drive an average in the southeast corner and out to the west. Then this, this, this wave of wetter weather through southwestern Wales, the Midlands into Northern England, that's probably mostly down to thunderstorms, a track of thunderstorms tonight and tomorrow, I think. So once, like, they are out of the way, I'd imagine these uh, anomaly charts, precipitation will be trending drier than average again for the rest of this week. Latest wind from that from earthnoldschool.net shows that we're drawing up southerly winds today. So uh, still got this trough of low pressure just out to our west and uh, that's bringing up the wind from like a southerly, southwesterly type direction. Okay, let's start having a look at some chart data then. Starting with the latest UK Met Euro run for uh, midnight on Thursday. High pressure building close to the country and uh, as we go into friday we see a nice ridge there pushing uh, up from the southwest that's midnight saturday mostly some just trying to get in from off the atlantic could bring some cloud and rain to scott to northern Ireland. england wales looking mostly dry but i think over about that uh, area of high pressure very warm potentially as well and uh, as far as we get to it for the uh, uk met euro run to midnight on sunday you know high pressure maintained for the south should bring lots of dry warm probably quite hot weather into the weekend some cloud of rain likely for scotland and also for ireland icon again with that ridge starting to get going on thursday Building up nicely into the south through Friday into Saturday. Should be lots of dry, warm weather there. Meanwhile, further north and west, it could just be some showery outbreaks of rain as this area of road pressure tries to get in from off the Atlantic. But for England and Wales, I think a very warm, perhaps locally quite hot weekend could be on the way. Into the beginning of next week, not much change. Really high pressure carries on close to the south. Should keep things mostly dry and warm there. Meanwhile, further north, looks a little bit more uh, showery with winds coming in from off the Atlantic. The GFS midnight run, all much of a much is for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that bridge of high pressure develops across the south. Should bring lots of dry, sunny, warm, very warm weather to England, Wales. A little bit more showery uh, for Scotland and also for parts of either too. That's Sunday, uh, midnight, Saturday, Sunday, high pressure. You know, it's just dominant, isn't it, <laughs> across most parts. It's actually more of a reach compared to, like, Icon and uh, UK Met, actually, for uh, the weekend. That will bring most of us a, a very warm, probably quite hot weekend. 
And then on into next week, well, just so signs of it starting to turn a little bit more showery there, but still with quite a strong influence from high pressure all the way up to day 10, really. Beyond that, low pressure starts coming in from off the Atlantic as the high pressure begins to uh, weaken. There's the remains of the uh, probably tropical storm and or hurricane Brett. Just there, by the way, on the far left-hand chart, uh, on the far left-hand side of the chart, as you're uh, looking at it. Meanwhile, for us, the high pressure is weakening, and uh, we're starting to get some showery bursts, particularly into the north and west as we go into early July with a cooler, fresher feel as well. That's as far as we get to with the GFS midnight run up to um, the 5th of July, and by then, looking rather showery, actually, especially so in the northern half of the country. But GFS 6 said again, with that ridge of high pressure up from the southwest on Thursday into Friday and Saturday. Again, nice ridge for England and Wales should bring lots of dry, fine, warm, or even very warm conditions with it. That's uh, Sunday, most of the country dominated by high pressure. I think the weekend's looking really quite hot, actually. Uh, I reckon 30 degrees is possible for parts of England and uh, whales, so get uh, get those barbecues sizzling. On into next week, well, high pressure maintains very warm, hot weather for southern and eastern parts. Just a little bit more showery and cooler out to the north and the west. Up to day 10, we start to find that high pressure just begin to weaken a little bit, allowing some showery conditions in to the north and the west. And that's a trend tree to the beginning of July as low pressure comes in from off the Atlantic, bringing some showery rain and uh, probably cooler temperatures as well. That's far as we get to GFS 6 then, up to the 6th of uh, 5th of July uh, at 6am, and looking cooler and a little bit more showery by that point. So we may have a hint here of something, a bit of a change, you know, in the pattern for early July with something a little bit uh, more showery. Let's, let's not go too far. This is, you know, not, I wouldn't say unsettled yet, but maybe a bit of a hint of the weather becoming a bit more showering and uh, somewhat cooler through the first week of July. If you enjoyed the video, please can you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Gal as well. Please get them to su subscribe as well. And thank you so much, everybody, for uh, doing that. GM, again, with that area of high pressure building across the uh, south of the east of the country through the end of the week and into the weekend. Should bring lots of dry and uh, warm, very warm, maybe locally quite hot weather over the weekend. That high pressure ridge is maintained into the beginning of next week as well. Eventually, we start bringing something a little bit more showery into the north, but in the south, still under the high pressure. So, you know, even up to the middle of next week, the GEM keeping things mostly dry and warm or very warm. And then the ECM WF, all much of a muchness for the end week weekend. High pressure builds into the south, should be lots of dry, very warm weather there. A little bit more unsettled further north and west. And then on into early part of next week, that high pressure just weakens a little bit as the lower pressure starts coming in from off the Atlantic. So that will bring showery outbreaks of rain across many parts of the country, actually, by around day nine and 10, with a cooler northwesterly uh, wind as well. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from TomedShow.com. More heavy downpour, potentially further storms coming up from the south tonight and tomorrow morning. Then, once that's out of the way, we're basically into a showering type scenario as we're moving into the end of the week. Most of the showery bursts are in the north and the northwest. Not that much getting down the south and the southeast. Um, and then on into the weekend, well, mostly dry for south, a little bit more unsettled further north, though, with some showery conditions through there um and then the extent just start to turn more showery as those winds turn into the northwest these are the options on the table within the ecm ensembles today for day 10 and we can't show them at the Titanic Met Office, actually, because they're only updated today. Ain't annoyingly. Um, so, instead, we're going to get them from the ecmdev.int uh, website. So, here we go, then. Um, we have got 11 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south, winds coming in from the west. <coughs> Excuse me, that brings some most of the south conditions into the north, driest weather would be down south. Uh, week uh, and then uh, sorry everybody. Um, the uh, next option number ten uh, with high pressure more strongly in from the uh, west and southwest, being mostly dry, warm weather. We have got nine members of the ECM ensembles just here. A little bit more showery at day ten. Winds coming in uh, from the northwest with that one. 
uh, we have got seven members of the ECM ensemble. It's probably been mostly dry weather to the south, showers uh, further north, and then we've also got another seven that have high pressure again to the south, low pressure to the north. That's a little bit more unsettled at day 10, brings in from the west. And then finally, we have got seven uh, members again of the ECM ensembles that look rather uh, mixed with low pressure off the anti high pressure being squeezed further southwards in two week time. These are the options that we've got. Gets us to the 4th of July. Um, 17 members of the ECM ensembles with a ridge over the UK. West Europe should be mostly dry, quite warm with that. 12 with uh, low pressure in off the Atlantic. That's going to be cooler and more showering. Um, 11 actually with quite deep low pressure in off the Atlantic. That's a big change with that one. I mean, that will be unsettled for all places. And then uh, we've got another 11 just here. With, again, low pressure dominant team from off the Atlantic. Still high pressure. Trying to hang on into the south. But we could have a hint here of a thing something a bit more unsettled, actually, into the uh, end of June and early July period. Let's have a look at CFS V2. So it's a 500 millibar height and knowledge breaking down into weekly periods. The first week period takes from the 19th to 25th of June. The coming week has high pressure to the east and low pressure is out to the west. So we're bringing in a warm or a very warm southerly flow. Should be mostly dry as well, but, uh, but low pressure in the Atlantic, you know, it's trying to bring something a little bit more showery in from uh, the west. Week two is going to be the 26th of June to the 2nd of July. Low pressure deepening in the Atlantic, high pressure setting a little bit further south eastwards into Europe. So that's bringing back some sort of a westerly flow, particularly to the north and west where there could be some showery rain there. Week 3 will be the 3rd to the 9th of July. High pressure still just about hanging on over to the east country. Lower pressure out to the northwest. Again, drawing up wind from a southerly direction. So it should be very warm with that. And then week 4 is going to be the 10th to the 16th of July. High pressure retreating back towards the Baltic Sea then. Um, I've got high pressure over here. So it's probably going to be low pressure coming through here, I would have thought. So low pressure getting a little bit closer to us in week four, turning perhaps back a little bit more unsettled. It's a long way off though, so probably not worth worrying about at this point. And we're done. If you enjoyed the video, please give you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much for everyone doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Gals, whether it's a get them to subscribe too. Thank you so very much, everybody for uh, doing that for us. Okay, I'll just tell you what's coming up tomorrow. We're going to have 6 a 6am UK weather forecast. The EC uh, 30 day forecast. UK rest of Europe will be released tomorrow as well. And as well as all that, it'll be the regular 10 to 14 day um, too. We've got the uh, sick grass and free festival update coming up for you this evening. Um, around 6 p.m. and then on um, live streaming at 8 we're going to discuss the winter 2023-24 NEO forecast along with show you some long range and uh, it's going to be going to be a fun stream I shall see you a little bit later on at 8 p.m. for this one though that's all for now and thanks for watching